as sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It tells us that while we were incapable of saving ourselves, wicked people, still sinners, and even enemies of God, he redeemed us through the death of his son. Such love is beyond our comprehension, but it is real because God says so and demonstrates it on the cross of Christ. And ladder number six, the choice is now ours to follow God and start making positive efforts towards developing a healthy relationship with God. Nobody has the key of life and death. Every day we sleep, we die. And it is when we open our eyes in the morning that we know we still have another day, Amen. which may not even end its hours before some are suddenly taken away. And this also reminded me of another testimony our daughter made on Friday when she was singing to that yesterday had gone, today is yours. Today is not even fully yours. Because we will not even see 10 o'clock tonight how much more tomorrow. So which means the hour you are breathing is what you know. And the psalmist said, and the psalmist saw it in Psalm 90, 3 to 6, you turn man back into dust and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or a watch in the night. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. In the morning it flourishes as person new. Towards evening it fades away and feeds away. No one knows when the hour to return to our Creator for Him or how will come. It does not depend on age. It does not depend on how holy and godly you are. It does not depend on how careful you are with your diet, with your health, or with your style of living. Yeah. Death comes when we least expect without notice. Yeah. How prepared are you? What are you doing with your talents that your Creator has given to you to glorify Him? Where will death meet you? And in what condition? Some people beg for death as a way of escape instead of trying to fight on and improve themselves. But death still refuses to take them away. Amen. Some waste away their lives believing that they will still live forever. Then there is still time to make up all the opportunities of the past 20 years only to be proved wrong. God does not hate us. In fact, he said that he does not rejoice in the death of sinners but that sinners should come to repentance. Amen. And if that be the case, what then draws us to God? Let us see the book of Jeremiah, 31, 3. The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Many people are running away from God, because they think that he is out to punish them. But the truth is that God loves us and gave us his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not be lost, but have eternal life. And this is what draws us to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our letter number seven. If then our God is love, as some people may still be disposed to ask, what indications or assurance do we have of his love for us? The Bible provides us with this answer in 1 John 3, 1-2. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. 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 
Not only does God love us unconditionally, but he has given us a new standing before him, anyone who is a child of God, through faith in Christ, need not to have a low self-esteem. We have become children of the King of Kings. And this is what gives us hope, security, and self-worth that put a spring in our step. With our heads up, it gives us the ability to face whatever is ahead. If you believe in him, you will demolish the world of Jericho in your life. If you believe in him, like the small shepherd David, you will overcome the giant in your life. Amen. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Our ladder number eight. From all that we have been told today, the secret message of the good news has been revealed clearly to us that we do not have any more reason to claim ignorance of the love of God in Christ Jesus or to look for any reason whatsoever not to serve God. We do not have any reason to doubt God's love for us. As God reassures us in 1 John 4, 16, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. What this means is that God does not only love us with an everlasting love, but he himself is love. Every other aspect of God's character, which is his whole, his glory, his unconditional love, there are some things which may, we may not understand, but everything he does is in the context of God is love. Amen. And the ladder number nine, I am really very happy today. Amen. And I'm really very thankful to my Lord Jesus for giving me this wonderful opportunity of enjoying the benefits of God's perfect love. Amen. And which I am also offering you today. Amen. And what does this perfect love cast out? We read in John 4, 17 to 18. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear is the result of sin. Because we have all sinned, we are all victims to the fear of death. As we read in Hebrew, 2, 14 to 15. Only God's redemption or redeeming love cast out this fear. And finally, the ladder number 10. There are 10 things which cannot separate us from the love of God if we have established our personal relationship with God. As Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 35 to 39, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. <laughs> For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Although, as Christians, we may face many hardships in this world, our joy and our peace come from knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. God is eternal, and therefore His love is everlasting. It is the cornerstone of our salvation. 
He offers us this free gift of salvation in Christ purely on the basis of his unconditional love for us. The only thing that can keep us from experiencing this unconditional love is our rejection of his saving grace. And may it never be true of you in Jesus' name. Amen. The hour is now. The hour is now to make that great decision which is long overdue. Tomorrow may be too late. I am not asking you to come forward and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you may already have done so. But you still need that little push to assist you in reestablishing your personal relationship with God. Most of us are still struggling to wholeheartedly build our hope on the love of God but our hearts are still not strong enough. Do not depend upon your own effort or your good works. But when the children of God are being called for the altar call, do not sit down and resign to your state of hopelessness. Shake off that old garment Amen. of sin, which is your sickness. Like that blind beggar, when he was told that Jesus called him, as we read in Mark 10, 46 to 51. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of, of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the high side, begging. And when he had, and it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Today, Jesus is also passing by. Amen. And we are the blind beggar. We are shouting, have mercy on me. But devil is pulling you back. Don't go. Don't stand up. Yes. They told him to shut up, to keep his peace, to keep his peace. Shut up. Don't disturb the master. But the more they shouted on him to shut up, the more he shouted aloud. How much upon me? That's one of the devil. How much upon me? And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind beggar, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee, and he cast in away his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Jesus is standing in our midst today. Amen. And once again today offering you his hand of friendship. Are you still going to sit down and refuse to cast away your garment of sinfulness and human failures? Or are you going